Hello, and welcome to Spire Technologies. My name is Guillermo, and today I'd like to give you a brief overview of Grandstream's 4200, 4100, and Handy Tone series of analog gateways. The purpose of these gateways is to either provide connectivity to analog telephone lines from your carrier, such as AT&T, to the outside world, or to provide connectivity to analog devices in your building, such as analog telephones, fax machines, fax servers, and credit card machines, just to name a few. Analog gateways provide this connectivity by converting analog signals into packets, and then connects to your Spider PBX over Ethernet through the network. In fact, your Spider will see those analog telephone lines as a SIP trunk, and the analog devices you have in the building as IP-based extensions. Now, right off the bat, you may be thinking, why do you even want to support analog connections in the first place? Well, if you have a hotel property with 100 guest rooms or a manufacturing facility with 100 telephones scattered on a large floor, it is significantly cheaper and easier to simply drop in one of these analog gateways to support your existing analog telephones, which work just fine than it is to run new Cat6 cable drops and install expensive IP telephones at all the locations. You have to also take the length of the cable drops into account as well. Just think of the large warehouse where you have telephones scattered across long distances. A standard Cat6 cable will go 100 meters or roughly 300 feet with an IP connection, but analog connections will easily go twice that distance. Each of these analog gateways come in various port densities using either two different types of ports, FXS and FXO. FXS ports are referred to as station side as they provide voltage or battery on the line to support analog devices in your building. The FXO ports are referred to as CO side as they receive voltage or battery from your carrier such as AT&T. CO is short for central office, again referring to your carrier. FXO and FXO, FXS ports are not interchangeable. If you need to provide connectivity inside your building, you need FXS ports. If you need to receive connectivity from the outside world, you need FXO ports. To oversimplify things, the big difference between them is that FXS ports provide voltage on the line whereas FXO ports do not. Now, in terms of physical connections, the 4100 and Handy Tones series of analog gateways are available in one, two, four, or eight port variations with either FXS or FXO using standard RJ connectors found here and here. The higher density 4200 series of analog gateways are used solely for FXS to support analog devices in your building and are available in 16, 24, 32, or 48 port increments. In addition to the RJ11 ports, the 4200 series gateways also have Amphenol connectors found here on the back. Each of these connectors support up to 24 ports. So if you have 48 port gateway, there will be two Amphenol connectors. Now you'll simply take an Amphenol cable and snap it into the side of a 66 or 110 punch down block found here. Now I know these blocks certainly take IT technicians way out of their comfort zone as they much rather prefer patch panels, but this is what you're going to see in telecom and is commonplace. The Amphenol in particular saves a lot of time in wiring and is very easy, I promise. Now, as far as IP side of things, you connect all station side FXS analog gateways to the WAN or wide area network port. 
and you connect all CO side FXO analog gateways to the LAN or local area network port. And that's it. You can stack these gateways in a rack or mount them on a wall. You can locate them all in a single equipment closet, or if you have a hotel as an example, you can disperse them on the property where perhaps you have a gateway on each floor and then pipe back a single ethernet connection for that floor down to your equipment room. One final mention is that FXO ports and CO side analog gateways can also be used to put a spider behind another traditional telephone system, such as an Avaya Definity, Nortel Northstar, or Mitel SX, just to name a few. And then use that spider as an application server, typically as a direct replacement for a traditional voicemail machine, such as an Avaya Octel or Active Voice Repartee. When we see these older traditional telephone systems, they tend to be at much larger sites and they represent a very big investment. What we can do is essentially use the spider as a zero extension system for voicemail and then slowly augment that older telephone system with a protracted migration over a long period of time, essentially providing extension to extension dialing so you move your telephone extensions slowly onto the spider. All these gateways that I've discussed today are analog gateways, but there are also digital gateways. Digital gateways provide T1 and PRI connectivity with even higher port densities using digital signaling, which also provides DID information. So be sure to check back for a future video on digital gateways. At the end of the day, if you're going to require analog connectivity, either within your building or connecting to the outside world, you're going to need an analog gateway. These gateways here have been on the market for a long time and are a very mature product. They are very useful and will help you save your existing investment and minimize what is required to upgrade into the spider. So please contact us and see if we can help you. Thank you. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications of new videos. Thank you from all of us at Spider Technologies.